Thank you, Mrs. Green. Thank you, Brother Dalton. Man, what a good... I'm ready to preach already. Ned, I'll tell you what. Hope you're ready to listen. We'll be here for a while. Now I'm excited. Power in the blood. Nothing like the blood still saves the lost. I'm not ashamed to claim the name of Jesus. Are you thankful? Are you proud to be a Christian? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm not ashamed to be a Baptist. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm not a Catholic, in case you're wondering, all right? This is First Baptist Church of Bridgeport. This is not the river or the rock or the air and the trees or the diamond and the rough. This is First Baptist Church, in case you're wondering. So I don't know where we'll go tonight. I got a passage of Scripture. We, we may go off track tonight. I'll tell you what, I'm excited. This is good. Man, the gospel is powerful. It is powerful. We don't want to treat it like my daughter's bike. We got bikes at our house. All right, we love riding. I got a road bike. My wife's got a nice comfort bike. My boy's got mountain bikes. And my daughter has one of them, them unicorn bikes, right? You know, the streamer's coming off. I don't know if it's unicorn, but it's like rainbows on it. And it's beautiful, but it's not as powerful as my motorcycle was. I sold it. I know, I know. But um, there's power in that bike. There's power in the gospel. Don't treat it like a little girl bike, all right? Give a track out, give the gospel, Jesus still saved. I'll tell you what, this is exciting to see what God can do during this time. He's grown his church, First Baptist Church. All right, and we're not the only church, the church of Jesus Christ is growing. The kingdom of God is growing, and he's doing something in Saginaw. All right, and I'm glad to be part of it. I got some numbers for our TV viewing. Many of you have given toward that, and um, we saw some good things already happen already. The first week, there were 700 viewers. A viewer is seven minutes tuned into one station. All right? I thought with very little prep, zero, zero commercials, it was great. Second link was 1,032 viewers. I got the numbers of a few minutes before church. We had 2,241 people on. All right? I can take those. I wish my bank account went like that. <laughs> so, but we're excited. That's uh, thanks to, to your work here and your, your care, your financial blessing with that. And we're just trying to see God's kingdom, the gospel, move forward in Saginaw. All right, have your Bibles. Please open to Philippians chapter number 4. Let's get to the scripture tonight. We'll look at finishing up our passage in Philippians chapter 4. We've pretty much tore apart verse number 8. Verse number 8, I mean, we spent a lot of time on it. Pastor knows he was here about all of them. <laughs> he was thinking, are you even going to get through that, Brother Howell? But I made it. But there's verse number 9. That's the end of the, the, this, uh, this little passage that we were looking at. Kind of this thought from Paul. Want to finish up and then get a pretty quick here, hit our summer preaching conference. I believe we have a tremendous lineup. Uh, most people you've heard here before, added a couple different people, but uh, other that, you'll love Brother Davison. He's coming back again, and Brother Treadway, and Brother Olette, you may know him, and Brother Brian McBride's coming back this year, and Brother Dave Young's going to be here with us, and Brother Mark Monty, Brother Hal Hightower, Brother Steve Hobbins from Lewis Avenue Baptist Church down near uh, in Toledo, or the uh, area will be up here with us. You'll enjoy him. And then a new gentleman by the name of Adrian Burden, evangelist. It'll be great. I think you'll enjoy uh, this, this summer lineup. So I'm probably forgetting one or two, but it's going to be a good summer. Philippians chapter 4, if you would, looking in beginning in verse number 8 of Philippians 4. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue... And if there be any praise, think on these things. Now we've tore that verse apart. We've dissected it. We've spent some time on it. I even brought a sledgehammer to church. Many of you saw that on live stream. I didn't do it when you were here uh, to protect the innocent lives around and me swinging a sledgehammer. But I want you to miss verse number 9 tonight as we look at verse number 9 to finish up kind of this, this series where Paul says, Those things... Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come worship you at this church, Lord. Thank you for the many blessings that you're showering us with during this time, Lord. And souls saved, people added to the church, Lord. Interest in the church, interest in you and the truth. Lord, discipleship. All things that you're doing, Lord. And pray that we'd be faithful during this time and we'd seek your face and your will, Lord, guide us into all truth. Lord, tonight I pray you'd help us during this time, help me as I speak, that it'd be clear, it'd be applicable, but Lord, I pray that your word would have the power that only you can give it, that it would not return void like you promised it would, and Lord, that it would bring the change that you wanted to bring in each one of our hearts. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Tonight I've entitled the sermon, doing what we're supposed to do. 
Kind of an encapsulation, kind of a finish up. And I want to begin with that sometimes we don't know what we don't know. All right, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. You're like, well, that's obvious, Brother Howell. Well, yes, but we don't admit that we don't know we don't know. Man, you ever been on your own little journey and your wife's like, stop and ask for directions? All right, of course not. Who needs directions when you have a vehicle? All right, you just press the gas harder, you'll get there. All right, when? I don't know, only the Lord knows. All right, but we'll get there. If the road says closed, it doesn't mean closed for you. It's closed for everybody else in life, but not for you. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. I read this story about a young man. He was from Scotland. He was admitted to a university, or to Oxford University, actually. And he moved into the dormitory. His parents and, uh, were kind of concerned about how he would get along, in their words, with the snobbish Brits. The people from Scotland, I guess, thought the Brits were snobbish. I'm not calling that's what they said. In this strange land. So during a telephone conversation, his mother asked him, Well, how are you finding the students, Donald? He said, oh, mother, they are strange and noisy people. The one, uh, the one on the one side bangs his head against the wall all night and won't sleep. And the one on the other just wails and wails and screams until the sun comes up at dawn. His mother said, oh, Donald, I'm so sorry. How do you put up with such rude and noisy people? And he said, mother, it's not hard at all. I sit there quietly in my bed and play my bagpipes all night. The end of this verse, number 9, says, And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace, the author of peace, the lover of peace, the prince of peace, the God of peace shall be with you. You know what often we want in our life is peace. Peace right here. This is what Paul has been dealing with. Peace right here. Even when this is not peace, he's stating that we can have peace right here. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And we say, well, pastor, you know, I'll have peace here when I have peace right here. But Paul says, no, you can have peace here even when there's not peace out here. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. We're looking for the answer. We're looking for the relief. We're looking for the help because then we'll feel good right here. You see, when someone has peace right here, right here, all right, they're strange. It's supernatural. You see someone, a Christian, walk through this path, through great tragedy, great calamity, and you see them sit there in spite of the situation. It would seem against all odds having this peace that comes from here, not determined by here. This is what Paul is referring to now. So as we come to this last verse, he says, with the purpose of this verse, the God of peace shall be with you. They say, well, pastor, why would I have peace? Because God is with you. And he can bring peace in the midst of any storm. We know that from Scripture. He sometimes allows storms. Other times, he creates storms. But all the time, he's in charge of storms. And the God of peace can be with you. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. I want to show us three things we can tonight. First of all is the information. The information. Beginning of verse 9, where Paul says these two little words, those things. Now, don't miss this. Those things could be a number of things from Philippians. He's been teaching some very specific things to the Philippians and to us as Christians. But they must at least include the previous things in verse number 8. All right? Don't pull the trick like your kids try to pull sometimes. All right? I want you to clean your room. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm playing. No, I want you to clean. Oh, you meant this room, Daddy. Which room did you think I was referring to? Those things. Don't miss the information. Those things. These things I've just been talking about, the things that I've been trying to teach you and convince you of, Paul saying it's a right mindset to be full of truth and honesty, appropriate thoughts, pure thoughts, commendable thoughts, worthy thoughts, thoughts full of excellence and praise. Those things. Those things what he's talking about the information don't miss it we all play the innocent game like that oh that's what you meant i'm sorry honey oh boss i'm sorry that's what you meant we knew perfectly well what they meant paul says those things the information the mindset of a mature christian dwells on those things 
The mindset of that mature Christian will bring peace. Paul brings it home now. You see, we live in an information age. You want to find out how to change a, leaky, a leaking pinion on a 2000 Z28? Google it. There's videos. I did. It took all of half a second. If you want to find how to make ice cream using only two ingredients, Google it. You can. I don't know if it's good or not, but you can do that. If you want to know what happened in 1946 and the cost of a new car, you can find that out too. Which, by the way, was the average cost was $1,120. And the world's first electric blanket was released in 1946. With all the information available so quickly to us, so quickly to us, we still can miss the most important information. Yes. If I can go a step further, Christian, with all the information available to us, a translated, correctly translated yes. Bible that you can find on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, in the bookstore, under the seat of your car, in the glove box, on a shelf at home. Most people have more than one Bible, don't, don't, don't we? Multiple Bibles. I have my church Bible, Dr. Martin. We have a church Bible and a devotion Bible and a home Bible and a soul winning Bible and a Bible in case it rains. With all the information available to us as Christians, Sometimes we miss yes. the most important truths. Right. We don't live in that peace. We're no better than an unsafe person. And we have this information right at our fingertips. Beyond that, we can look up Greek and Hebrew study helps if we wanted to. We can find concordances and maps, interpretive guides, dictionaries. We still miss it. You ever wonder if God, He doesn't, but you ever wonder if He just kind of looks as what else can I do for you? And he doesn't say that. Or he does. He's gracious. He's merciful. I'm just, I'm just supposing. But, but, but if, if, if our kids had all that, would we not say, what else can I tell you? What else can I do for you? You're, you're going to have to get it at some point. All right? I, 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 can I make it any plainer for you? Why are you still... Why aren't you... It's right here. All right? I'll even put it with little numbers and chapters by someone else to help you so you can find it real quickly again. He didn't write the Bible that way. We put that in afterwards. Can you imagine without those having to find it? We even have chapters and numbers. It's tremendous. The information is at our fingertips. Peace is available. That's what I'm trying to say. Peace is available. Don't say, don't believe the lie that you can't have the peace of God in your heart, in your mind. You can. You can. That's, that's what Paul's saying. Those things. We have the information. But he goes beyond that. That ought to be enough. It ought to be enough. He goes beyond that in this verse. And I see next the observation. He says those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. There's a natural order to these, but it's a different order than we have in the verse. In the verse, we have learned and received first, but naturally they would have heard and seen first. They would not have learned it if they had not heard it or observed it. All right, They would not have just, uh, uh, by osmosis, uh, got this truth. They would have not come up with this truth. Though the, the verse says learned and received, the natural order is heard and seen. There's an observation. He expected them to observe with our ears. To be a good listener. You know that you can hinder the information, the truth from God's Word, when you shut off your ears. When you stop listening. You can shut off the power from God's Word when you shut off your ears. James says this, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, Romans, so in faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Jesus in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. The question I have in this is, are you trying to listen to God? I'm not asking if you're here tonight, because you're here. You're under the sound of my voice, but are you trying to listen? Those things which you have learned and received and heard... We can shut off 
our ears. We can sit in church with a smile on our face and a Bible in our lap, taking great notes and not hear a blooming thing. I've been guilty of it. We can also fall asleep in church. I've been guilty of that too. All right, I won't ask for a raise of hands on that. Some of you would be asleep, so you couldn't right now, but that's all right. But we can sit here and we, we can not be good listeners. It's not that I'm anything special because I know I'm not. But God's Word is special. He honors His Word. He uplifts His Word. God's Word is special. I want to listen to God's Word. This, during the summer preaching, we'll have some people that you will like more than others. There'll some be like, I can't wait till so-and-so comes. And I may be sick on so-and-so's night. Now, why do we do that? I couldn't get anything out of him. Then they bring God's Word. Then you can get something. Are you trying to listen? I'll tell you what, when God speaks, I want to listen. As a dad, I've asked my kids, are you listening to me? Or this way, have you listened to a word I've said? It's rhetorical. It doesn't require an answer. I know the answer. The answer is no. All right. The light was on. All right. But no one was home for a few moments. That's happened to me in church before. Has it happened to you in church before? Has it happened when you're reading your Bible before? You're looking at it, right? You're, you're reading it. You get through it. The chapter gets done. I'm like, wow, what happened in that chapter? I have no idea. I wasn't listening. We need to listen. You see, Paul says those things which you have learned and received and heard. He wants us to listen, not just to read it, but to listen to it. That means to internalize it, take it in. Listen, are you a good listener to God? I've used this illustration before, but I want to be so sensitive to God that he can whisper and I'll hear him. I want to hear him whisper. I don't want God to have to yell at me. All right, because I've read in Scripture how God yells. I don't want none of that in my life. All right, God will get your attention. He'll get my attention. He knows how to, I want him to be able to whisper. You say, yes, sir, whatever you want. To whisper a truth, that's what I need to put in my life. Man, I've been missing that. Wow. I've often said this, and it's kind of the point of this message. Our problem is not a knowing problem, but a doing problem. When we come to church, it's not always that we're going to hear some brand new truth. You probably won't hear any brand new truth tonight. But maybe, just maybe, you've been slipping up in your life in some truth you already know. It happens to me. Wow. I get to church and I'm supposed to love your wife. I'm supposed to what? Love my wife? I never heard that before. I've heard that many times. Sometimes God says, when you said that, J.D., that wasn't loving. Are you sure, Lord? It seemed loving at the time. <laughs> Argue with the Lord. Listen. Trying to be a good listener. We listen by, by taking it in, by making sure our minds stay centered. I tell you what, when I'm in church, if I'm not careful, my mind can wander. Right? That's why I typically, when I'm in church, use just my Bible if I take notes on a pad of paper. You know what happens with your phone? I, I'm not against you using a phone in church. I have no problem with that. But you know that my phone buzzes in church? Does your phone buzz in church ever? Hardest thing when it buzzes in your pocket not to look at it. Who is it? It's got to be an emergency right now. I know it. And you look at it, it's not an emergency. It's a guy two rows over trying to make you laugh. <laughs> you don't think I don't know. I've been in church my whole life. I know these tricks. Right? But it caused us not to listen. He says, I want you to be a good listener. Those things which you have learned and received and, and heard, observation by, by hearing. We don't use radios much any longer now, do we? Now, some of you do, I'm sure. But in the days of radio, you had to tune the dial. Get it just right. A little too far this way, and it was just static. And as you got closer, you could kind of make out the sound. Maybe it was a hockey game. Maybe it was a baseball game, perhaps a basketball game. And as you got closer with the dial, it became clear, clear, clear. And then, boom, it locked right in. You could enjoy it. Man, some of those stations, when I was young, you had to be, like, like hold your tongue just right, right? Ah. If you didn't get it just right, you're just messing with it. I want God's voice to be clear to me. And you know what? He wants it to be clear to me. He's not trying to give His Word, His information with static. He wants it to be clear. Observation with my ears. But He said it's also observation that you can see. He said not only did you hear these things, Paul said that you saw them in me. You've seen them demonstrated before. 
And I can stay with authority that if you spend any time at First Baptist Church, you will see Christians who demonstrate these particular truths. You will see people, you will see Christians, amazing, wonderful, God-filled, spirit-controlled Christians who go through tragedy or calamity or a hard time, and yet they walk with the peace of God. Not only can you hear about it, but you can see it. What I'm saying is, you and I have no excuse not to have the God of peace with us. I had the privilege of talking to Brother Lee Evers before church tonight, and I love that man. All right, and he was just praising God for what God was doing, how he brought this, his apartment in, in Frankenmuth. And, man, I, and I love having Brother Edwards at church. I, I got to go to camp with him for years, and he'd make me coffee in his Airstream trailer. What a man of God. Okay. But you want to see someone who walks in the peace of God and walks with God, you talk to Brother Edwards. And there are lady and man that I could mention over and over in this church. In this church. You see, we can see it here at First Baptist Church, and not just in this church. There's tremendous churches all around us. God is not dead. His Spirit is still working. We can see this all around us. But sometimes we're not looking really well. Sometimes we're like the husband at the grocery store who wife said, well, it's on aisle three. I want this brand of chocolate chips. And men, we can't find it. But ladies, don't judge us too harshly. It could be like you trying to pick a tool for us off a tool bench. It's right there. All right. You see, sometimes we don't see what we ought to see. Paul says there's information, there's an observation. But then he says there's an assimilation. There's an assimilation. Those things which you have learned and received, it means to take it in as one's own, to learn and receive it, to not only see it and to hear it, but to understand it and to internalize it. You see, sometimes we just do things not really understanding why we do them. And Paul says, I don't want you just to do these things, but I want you to learn these things and receive it. We come to church. All right, that's... The what? The why is to honor God, to worship God, to encourage the people of God. We refrain from certain activities. That's the what. Christians ought to refrain from certain activities. Can I get an amen? Christians ought, or there's some things Christians ought not to do. We can all agree on that. Every Christian agrees on that on some level. The why is because my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. All right, to internalize that, when we talk about our mind and these truths, truth, honesty, purity, worthy, commendable, excellence, and praise-filled thoughts, the what is how our, our thoughts are centered. All right, the what is, I will not dwell on this thought because it doesn't please God. The why, all right, the receiving it, the learning is to know that when I do that, I can have the God of peace with me. All right, the, the what is a, a little easier to get. I either allow this thought to dominate my mind or, remember the sledgehammer, whack a thought. In fact, I think the sledgehammer is right off the stage. Over there. I can pull it back out and whack something if I need to. I don't know what I'd whack. Johnny, come up here for a second. <laughs> no, actually, Johnny, grab that sledgehammer. right there. Grab that sledgehammer for me, man. You, you, you'll find it back there. If you can't, well, he won't. He's my son. Oh, boy. All right, that's the what. The what is to whack that thought. Right, to whack those thoughts. That's what we spent all that time on. Please, if you missed it, look it up again on YouTube. You can watch the sermons all right there. Thank you, Johnny. All right? Good. Just lay down right there, man. It'll be fine. I'm just kidding. All right? Thanks. So the what? It's a sledgehammer. Whack the thought. That's the what. All right? Don't allow thoughts all right, that don't fit into that, to, to that guidelines of Philippians 4, verse 8. You see them? The truthful thoughts? Don't, don't let them in. That's the what. The why is found here in verse number 9. That's the why. He says to internalize it, to make it my own. There's a difference between hearing and seeing and internalizing. Or we say it like this way. I'm a dad now. Growing up, dads have dad jokes. We know dad jokes. Sometimes my boys say that's a dad joke. Ungrateful brats. Remember the day, though, that I found myself saying some things that my dad used to say. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Kind of slips out, like, oh, where'd that come from? Get back in there. Don't say that. 
I found some of these things that dads say. Dads, all right? So, dad, you give me some shout outs here. Here we go. Here's some things that dad love to, dads love to say. They say this, after they give their child a quarter, don't spend it all in one place. It's a dad thing. How about this, after someone mistakes a left for your right, no, the other right. Come on, I've been guilty, I've been guilty. Yep. How about when something fails to scan at the cash register, I guess it's free then. Guess it's free. (laughs) Brother Mitchell, you're not helping yourself, my friend. How about when you say, uh, what's the damage? After any bill comes. Or, or here's one, whenever anything breaks for any reason, they don't make it like they used to. <laughs> well, you find that you're growing up and you hear those things. You heard them, right? You saw them, and then all of a sudden you find yourself saying them. Why? Because somewhere along the way, you begin to receive it. You begin to learn it. You begin to internalize it. All of a sudden, you've now brought the truth from God's Word home. Amen. Remember a few years back, we had, a, we had a student, tremendous student, graduated a few years back. When he first came to us, wasn't saved, got saved when he got here. First day of school, he swore at school. All right, generally accepted. We don't allow that at Bridgeport Baptist Academy. All right, but we got through that. And I remember the day, though, that he came into the office he said, Pastor, I'll pray for my sister. She uses a lot of bad language. Somewhere along the way, all right, he heard it, he saw it, and he received it. You know, the point of, of coming to church and hearing, you know, God's word is it so you receive it. I'm not trying to waste your time. God's not trying to waste your time. He's trying to change your life. God's word wants to change your life, so receive it. Internalize it. And last at night, we have the observation, the information, the assimilation. We have the implementation, the easiest part of the verse, and the hardest. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, one word. Look at your scripture. Help me here. What does it say? Do. What does it say? Do. He says do it. Implement it. Don't just know it. Do it. Or Obey it. Follow it. Have it a part of your life. There is no benefit without action. But pastor, I know what you're saying, but I don't have any peace in my life. Because you're not doing what God has said to do. Well, I tried it. Didn't work for me. Really now? Really? I find that hard to believe that God didn't work for you. Because last time I checked, he never fails. That God can do anything but fail. One time a young man, well, I tried giving, Pastor, and God didn't take care of my my bills. You know that God never promises to take care of your bills? He promises to supply your needs. Those are different than bills. I can go buy a brand new Ferrari, that's a bill. God never said he'd pay for it. But even if... If God didn't, all right, he still didn't fail me. He's doing something. But yet, God's never failed me. Uh, uh, David said he's never seen the wicked beg bread or the wicked forsaken or his his children beg beg for bread. I've not missed too many meals in my life. I remember a time when we didn't have much left growing up. Some people dropped off groceries at the front door. I remember that. God never failing. See, God can't fail. You try it, it doesn't work for you. I'll tell you right now, the problem's not God. He says, those things which you both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Time to obey or say it this way, no excuse. I found this list of hymns for the honest Christian. Hymns for the honest Christian. Brother Don did a great job singing that song tonight. and uh, I I love that song you sing, those hymns in there. How about this hymn, I Surrender Some. (laughs) There shall be sprinkles of blessings. How about this one? Fill my spoon, Lord. Hmm. Oh, how I like Jesus. Kind of hit close to home sometimes, don't they? Well, I got some more. I love to talk about telling the story. It is my secret what God can do. 
take my life and let me be where he leads me I will consider following just as I pretend to be tis so sweet tis so sweet to trust in money count your problems name them one by one I have decided to follow Jesus for a little while sweet minute of prayer have mine own way Lord Jesus calls us we don't answer or this last one my Jesus I love me see our problem is not a knowing problem it's often a doing problem those hymns for honest Christians sometimes they strike real home to me as well all right but Paul says you want the God of peace you want to be with you you want to have that peace rule in your heart and mind and then you got to do these things there's no excuse no excuse it's too hard pastor no excuse they don't understand there's no excuse and then there's no delay I read this quote instant obedience is the only kind of obedience there is delayed obedience is disobedience that's good I'll do it later I'll get right later I'll dwell on this thought for a little while delayed obedience is actually disobedience he promises that if we do these things we've learned we've received we've observed them and we've seen them we've heard about them we just read them in Philippians 4 verse 8 he says if you do that the God of peace shall be with you not just that person across the auditorium not just the pastor not just your wife not just your mom not just your grandma not just your grandpa not just your co-worker God of peace shall be with you a personal guaranteed promise a promise that is as good as God is the author of peace the lover of peace the maintainer of peace the God of peace we see the same thing in Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Amen. See, you can have peace in your mind. You can have a peace-filled mind. You have to resign as the general manager of the universe and let God do that. And follow his scripture. Your mind in left field, come back to Jesus. Your life in turmoil out here, come to Jesus. Come to God. He'll give you peace here when out here is a mess. You have peace tonight? If not, it's not this problem, it's this problem. God of peace shall be with you. Lord, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the peace that you promised to bring. Lord, we've looked at your word, we've seen the truths from it, what we're supposed to do. Lord, I pray you'd help us. We're frail, we're flesh. And we're weak. But help us be honest with ourselves. You're tonight with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. One who would say, Pastor, as you were speaking, God spoke to me. Would you pray for me that I would respond to God the right way? I need to maybe be a better listener. Maybe I know what I'm supposed to do, but I haven't done it yet. I need to do those things. Would you pray for me? Slip your hand, I'll slip back down, I'll see it. Amen. Amen. Pray for you. Amen. 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 I wonder if you're here tonight or maybe you've joined us on live stream and you're not sure you're on your way to heaven. The Bible says that God loves you and Jesus died for you. And if you trust Jesus and Him alone, He'll save you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not trusting Christ, I encourage you to trust in the night. Lord, help this time of invitation. Lord, those who raise their hands, would you help them to do business with you in Jesus' name? As we stand on our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, the altar's open. If you need to do business with God, I encourage you to do that now. Folks are coming now. And maybe you're listening tonight or you're here tonight and you never trusted Jesus Christ. The 
Bible says we're all sinners, but Jesus Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death. Death is separation from God. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We deserve to pay for our sin and be separated from God. But God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. My friend, if you never trusted Christ, you can today trust in Jesus and his payment for your sin on the cross. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Could I encourage you to trust Jesus today? If you're listening online, I encourage you to trust in the day. You can trust him in a simple way. You can pray a simple prayer with me. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. That he was buried and rose again. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and him alone. My friend, if you've never trusted Christ, whether you're here in our auditorium, whether you've joined us online, would you ask him to tonight? Pray from your heart. Say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Pray. He'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, was buried and, was ro- and rose again the third day. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and Him alone. My friend, if you're here, if you're online tonight, and you prayed that, would you do me a favor and let me know? If you're here, would you slip up your hand and say, Pastor, I just prayed that prayer. I've never prayed it before. I meant that. I'll see that. Hey, I'll acknowledge you. I'll draw no more attention to you than I did anyone else. If you're online, there's a screen there that, with a phone number, a website, an email address. Would you just send me a message? Drop me a note. I'd love to send you a free book, Help You Grow as a Christian. You could trust Christ today. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, I pray there's, there's anyone who has heard tonight about your son, Jesus Christ, and they've never trusted you. I pray they would trust you today. And make today the day of their salvation. Lord, thank you for the truth from your word and those who are touched by it. May we walk in your spirit and have your peace upon our life. In Jesus' name, amen.